Eaton. So this is what we mean by conceptual understanding. Again, sorry, it's a little bit lengthy, uh, but the whole idea here is that for those who have understand, conceptual understanding, you can transfer it, apply it, use it in real life, make good decisions, etc. So that's where we're going. Uh, that's the, that's the task for today. All right. So in simple language, I have to teach like uh, I did talk to see, uh, younger kids before, but the way I explained it was, let's say you don't know what the definition of this word scuttle means. Do you know what that means? No. Well, let's say you just had a new vocabulary test in your English class. Uh, so we taught you what it means. So you know it. But in order to understand it, you really have to be able to use it in real life. Do you agree? Now, do you think you can use trick functions in, in your daily lives? Yes. Junior, yes? Really? No. Okay. But you see, you see the, the nature of the challenge here? So I think if you understand it, you understand the context, you can use it, yeah, you can make better decisions, etc. But again, depending on the context, one word can mean different things too, right? So in order to distinguish which is the right meaning, you need to have understanding. So this is what I Googled, and this is how they explain it to the elementary school kids. This is kind of like knowledge or recall. I don't think you, if you're so good at this, I still don't think you really understand addition. <coughs> right? This is this is some technique that we could want to talk about. You could have done something else. But let's say there's a kid out there and be like, oh, no, 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 no. Well, let me think about it. It's why don't I add 200 and take away two? That's deeper than this. This the robots can do this, no? Well, I really I think this is quite smart. I think that will take less time to then do this. That's true. Yeah. Right? So you see the difference? Uh, like elementary school kids get tend to um, it just sinks in with them more. Um, how about this one? You divide, oh I just swap it and multiply. Right? You guys are being so robotic about that. But if you think about it, division means how many of the things that you divide goes into half? How many one six goes into half? Three, right? So that is the the more of an intuitive definition of understanding what division means. Right? So right now, I think you maybe you're making a transit from here to here with trick functions. Now, as teachers, how can we help you transit to understanding better? That's the task. So I don't know. If you take become a teacher, you have all these frameworks. So you clear this. And, oh no, this guy. Here, up here, sorry. Everybody has a few ways to explain it, but eventually, this is just higher order skills. I think he did all those problems that's in the textbooks. Yeah, you know it very well, but we would like you to go up here and create. Exactly, I want you to create your own knowledge with trick functions. So, we are just like, what on earth is this not what I'm talking about? Right? So, yeah? You see, you see where we're going? Explain this if you don't understand it or you don't understand it. So, yes, Mr. Nakamura, I get it. I want, I want to apply now. I want understanding. But how? Is the question, right? So, okay, why don't we take a quick look at the graduates, what they have done with the trick functions that they have learned. Here are the examples that you have done in your class, in your textbooks. Is it any kind of out of context, do you enjoy this stuff? Are you passionate about this? Do you think it's slightly redundant too? Okay, let's take a look at how the last year grade 12 apply this to something that they're interested in, they're passionate in. One student, Japanese taiko performance. She started videotaping the way she hit the taiko because, <coughs> as you can see, there's a circular motion. I can study the mechanics of my hit, this is Mr. Sakuma, who's really, really good. This is Milan, she's not so good. Sad. But she wanted to be like, Sad. you know, I remember Milan was like, Mr. Sakuma, you know, I do this, but I don't really understand what his instruction is. So I want to videotape it and <coughs> kind of highlight the difference. So what she did was, she started modeling the trick functions at the height of the typo, and she started comparing 
the amplitude, the periods, and etc. And that, with that evidence, she started to change the way she practiced a little bit. That's one way. But she was, Milan was very involved with the Taiko Club for many years. Alright, that's one way to do it. Another way, so that's the function that she found. Another way is this, uh, ballet dancer. So what she did was, she filmed her ballet moves vertically above. Her leg is ropes going around, right? But it's not a nice circle though. But she wanted to apply the, the displacement, the position of her foot, the toe, to, on a unit circle. So what she did was she found two functions, two trig functions operating here. So she found one for the red and another circle for the, for the it's a slightly difficult movement. Uh, if you want to take a look, I'm happy to share you with, uh, the uh, document, but she found two different trick functions. Right, she was able to model, and then with our understanding of calculus, we could study how this trick function changes as well. Okay, so how about this? Those who are into engineering, Satoshi, you're an engineer, right? Maybe. Well, this student, he was very shocked by that. Uh, what's that? The, the Fukushima earthquake? It caught him by surprise. He wanted to study the mechanics of a dampening system. Do you know what that is? Oh, the one that. Like... <laughs> what does dampen mean? Like, what are you, a Russian person? Have you been on the sky trees or the super tall Shinjuku buildings? Have you, been in, have you seen the one in the middle? It's actually moving. You see that? It's actually dampening any earthquakes or any shifts in the ground. So that if something happens, it'll move the other way and it will counteract the earthquake. So those buildings, you know, crazy it may sound, it's actually moving. Those, those skyscrapers. So he again, he built them all. Actually, Nishi, this is your brother. <laughs> yes. So Naman basically. He made an experiment uh, building and he put a dampening system like a pendulum and he moved the building this way and as the building moves this way, the pendulum moves this way. So together it minimizes the shape. So there's one curve each. Good? Alright. How about this one? Who likes, who listens to music? Who has those Bose headphones? Oh, the the noise cancelling ones. Right? Yes, noise cancellation yeah. device. Yeah, that's so cool. What's happening here is basically, uh, the, I mean, obviously it's more complex than this. Is let's say you have this outside noise. This device in here emits a counter wave. So together, when you add those two sounds, it neutralizes. <coughs> Right? Waves, sounds are waves. Waves are modeled by trig functions. Great? So together, this is what's happening. Obviously, I don't know what these components are, but that's what's happening. And the current grade 12 tried to do this this year by modeling sound in the, the loud times and the lunchtime. And she wanted to emit a counter wave, counter sound. But it was a little bit too difficult. But if you want to... Uh, uh, we convene this project. You're welcome to. I'm happy to help you the way I can. Okay. Environmental science. This is the world temperature of Japan from 1910 to 1920. So obviously it's going to go up and down because we have four seasons, right? Now what she found was she went to this World Bank group and she, she was able to collect data for the last 30, 40 years. So what she started to do was she just started plotting it. She realized that it is going up and down, but it's actually going up with the trend. Hence, what do you call this? Global warming, right? So the thing with scientists nowadays is they just look at this for this stream. It's like, yeah, it's going up and down, but there's no, there's no increase. It goes up because it's summer. It goes down because it's winter. But hold on, let's just see a bigger picture here. It's actually going up and down with the upward trend. Right, so then she was able to confirm this, but I guess some politicians still don't want to believe this, unfortunately. So, but again, she put applied all those transformations. Okay, one well, few more and I'm done.
we are into sports analytics. So, one student was interested in Naomi Osaka's serve. She has the fastest serve in the world recorded today. So what she started to do was she started to trace again, just like a typo student, and she was able to model her uh, serve, serve me mechanics and find two functions, one function for here, and this one, she looks like a trick function, sine function, so she modeled that. Great, and then she was able to find a model. And once you find this, you can do so many things to this equation. You know, we could take the derivative, we could integrate it, we could all do all these things and find interesting stuff. That's the essence of modeling, and potentially predict the future. Lastly, this guy, Oliver, who loves volleyball, so he, he just couldn't figure out how to do a jump serve. So he basically started to mathematically study a professional jump serve, and very similar to Mentang's, he was able to, he basically broke it down into different steps and studied the math underlying it. Does that make sense? Okay, so I hope that gave you some trigger as to what you could possibly do, because in semester two, we will do uh, another investigation that involves this, which involves you finding your circular motion that you can model using and then different different technology, and you can study it yourself. Good? Yes, Hana. Um, no, this, no, no, we don't do that anymore. So it's going to be a one semester long project. Well, most likely we'll introduce this in a few weeks. But you will, I will show you how to do the technology a little bit. But you can find, uh, you can do your, and work on your own projects. Good? Okay, so I'm gonna talk, I know I've been talking quite a bit today, but five more minutes. And I'm sure you're inspired, I hope. But the question is how? How on earth did these students do this? Now, I'm gonna, internet is incredible. There's so many things out there that will enable you to do this. So I'm gonna share three things that I know that I share with those students. All right, one is called a tracker. Have you heard that software? No. Second one is TI Calculator, which I will help ask you to do a small exercise. And three, use another uh, app called Webplot Visionizer. But maybe if you have time, we'll do that. But I want to show you the first two for today. Good? Okay, so Tracker is basically a physics tool, the video analysis tool, which I think is better if I just show you an example. But uh, it works, it's, it's not that hard guys, it works just like this. So, I'm actually personally interested in sports analytics. Uh, for example, how do you throw a baseball pitch correctly? Can you guys see this? Are you want to turn off the light in But So, what I did was, I basically, this player has the best record of written, oh, well, as of today. His name is Justin Verlander. And the Houston, you're in Atlanta. Well, I'm mean, sorry, he's in Houston. But basically, what I did was, I in, this is a video. Throwing motion has a circular motion, right? Yeah. So I want to study the mechanics, but I could also study where the knee goes. I could also study where the elbow goes, etc. But so I just started following three different points on the on the body. So here I introduce the unit circle. This is the center, right? Now, this is actually slow motion, so what I'm going to do is, so here I'm going to start measuring this. So this blue, light blue is measuring the, uh, the hand or the wrist. And as you can see, keep an eye on the wrist. This, this, the position of this guy is being translated here as data. Right, so as I go through the video, you can see that we're going up at the, uh, corresponding position, and then bam, there's the circle right there. You see it? So I have like a nice sine curve looking thing here. Well, obviously I need to split this function a little bit, a little bit more and do more sophisticated analysis, but that's how easy you can collect data. Great? Does that make sense? Now, I have a few other students who do tornado kicks and a karate. 
uh, and why not? Many, many things out there you can do. Basketball shop, Roy, I think that will be a great project for you. <laughs> but math and data will enable us to extract or demystify a lot of things that we think we see it, but actually, how do we know with precision? So that's Tracker, guys. It's a very powerful tool, and it's free. Everything is free. All right, second one is your lovely TI calculator. Yes, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's say this is your data. Here, you follow these instructions on the board. Let's, okay, this, is, this will be a good approach if you don't have a video. Like, you collect your own data. Let's say you measure all the temperature every day. Right? Let's say you have a list of data like here that you collected. Here, so no video. Um, and then you want to try and fit a trick function through this data. Most likely given that it has a circular motion. So what I could you go to stat edit? You know what it is? Press the button stat, good, and go to edit. And the first column, we can put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 2, 11, 12. 1 for January, 2 for February. And L2, please put the uh, temperature. Where's stat? Stat is over here. Right. There. Stat, edit the first column. Here you go, I don't know me. No, you want to. Oh, no, actually, here you go. If you have data in there already, please clear it. We want to
Pretty sure, pretty sure. If you have a little technical problems, could you be careful? Pretty sure, guys.